Good morning, good afternoon, good evening across the country, around the world. Welcome back to the Kerbal Space Program 1.2. Uh, we're back at the KSC. I recently took a rover out and I went to whoa, a little glitchy. Went to the shores and then I took it out to into the grasslands. So I got science out there. Is that? Oh, those are trees. I'm just waiting for like buildings to show up or something or a city. Anywho, I drove it out to the grasslands. Eventually, I'll also take it out to, what, the Midlands, Lowlands, Highlands, and the mountain. Well, I did the mountains already. But I'll take it out there and get more science, because we can. But anyway, we did those couple trips, and we got some science to spend. So the next thing I want is fuel systems, because that'll give us external fuel ducting. Asparagus staging. Oh, yeah. Advanced construction. Nah. Aerodynamics. Nah. Landing. Okay, we'll want some of these for, for other things. Flight control, which is good. RCS will be good for docking and stuff. We're not going to do that yet. Lander stuff. Miniaturization makes things tiny. Then electrics. Ooh. Solar panels. Solar panels. I think I already have some batteries. I do. I have some batteries. Okay, so we'll make sure to install some batteries. All right. That being said, we are going to go do a flyby of the moon. All right, so let's get this built and get Jebediah on his way. So it's obviously going to be returning. Uh, no, utility, yeah. It's just to be a really simple mission. There's going to be no science whatsoever, just uh, that stuff. Uh, thermal, yes. Just the pod with Jeb, good. And then power. We're going to throw a couple batteries on here. Just because, um, whoa, snap, toggle, snap, please, there we go. Just because I don't want to run out of power and not be able to move. Um, we don't have any solar power, solar power, solar panels yet. So, yeah, you know, I kind of, kind of want to cheat a little bit. Tap on it. I re recently learned a trick from somebody, F, local. Or absolute. So we want it to be local. We're going to sink these guys in. Just. Just. Oh. Not that much. Okay, let's turn angle snap off. Just a little bit. Just to kind of make them. There we go. That's fine. That's better. Okay, anywho. Um, so this is all it's going to come back. No science. Well, we can do. Uh, what's it called? We can do. Um, crew reports, status reports. But that's about a couple of Stack decoupler. All right, so now we have these bigger fuel tanks, the FLT-800. We probably don't need that yet, though. We're just going to put one of these guys on there. Or we'll need it down below. But there, we're just going to have that guy and a Terrier. This, is gonna, this smaller package is going to have tons of Delta V once we're up in space. Uh, for now... Oh, no, I'm sorry. I actually come up to that because I'm lazy. This. So now is when we start using these guys. Um, one. No problems on those. Cost still pretty low. We're gonna do. Let's do two here with this. And there, let's put a swivel. I have no idea how much delta. Actually, I take it back. Swivel down here. And then, yeah. Another decoupler here. There we go. Okay. And down here, we'll build the main ascent stage. Boom. And then, engines will again get some swivels. Get a swivel. There we go. Alright, so that's the main central stage, I guess, if you will. But now, we're going to do some boosters on the side and some asparagus staging. Uh, if any of you are unfamiliar with asparagus staging, it's a way... Well, well, we'll get to it in a second. Let me just get this stuff... Um, yeah, let me just get this stuff put in place. Uh, toggle. Boom. And then... I can't... No, that's going to copy that too. Okay. Um, asparagus staging is where you can... Oh, there you go. Is where you... Have stiff that stages 
Oh, yeah, hold on. We could put the things in. It'll make more sense once it's built. Uh, nose cones. And structural, we have, yes, struts. Struts are always important. They help keep things nice and straight. So, as it stands right now, let's put this down here. These three engines will all burn at the same time, burn through their fuel. Uh, this one should be a little more efficient, I think. So this, these will burn faster. But that's not terribly efficient. What we want is to do this. This way, as the fuel drains from here, uh, scratch that, as the fuel drains from here into this engine, these guys on the outside are, yes, feeding this engine here, but they are filling the central core back up. So when we burn all the way through this, we pop these guys off. This is still full of thrust, or full of fuel, I should say. Yeah. So that should be a decent help. Small inline. Actually, I think that's not a bad idea. I know there's some reaction up in here, but a little bit can't hurt. We'll just toss it on top here. It'll be fine. It'll help us make things maneuverable, since we don't have much else. Uh, I mean, the Terrier does have some gimbling, but not much. Uh, that's that. And then lastly, let's go ahead and put on some fins, just the simple-ish ones. those. That'll help us stay nice and straight. And lastly, structural, some launch clamps. Stability controls? Launch stability enhancer. Okay. I prefer the phrase launch clamps because that's what they look like. Uh, we'll put those up there. Alright, so we're going to double check our staging. So, all three rockets at the bottom are going to fire. Release the clamps. Burn through the outer booster pieces. And ditch those. Burn through this, the bottom core ditch that guy. Light that one, burn through that, ditch that, light the terrier, and then, uh, oh no, not, not in the same stage there. The terrier should get us fly by the moon and bounce back, and then uh, the parachute. So I think that should be good. From what I've built in the past, this should be enough. Uh, question is, will it be stable enough? Oh, here, I want to add one more bit of strutting. Uh, down here. That'll just help ensure that these guys are stapled down here as well. But of course, when you pop the separator, all the struts break apart as well. Uh, yes. Okay. So I think that should be good. Moon. Fly by. Why? Trying to think. Um. Yeah, we have command. Ooh, are we gonna have Jeb? Yeah, we're gonna have Jeb. This is gonna give us a little more uh, flexibility. Uh, battery should be okay. I don't think the Terrier has an alternator on it, though, does it? No. Engine. Flame out. Trying to read. Oh, yes, there. Very top there. Oh. Very top there. Alternator. No alternator. So, once we get to a certain point, I hope we still have power. No, otherwise, hey, we'll have to launch a rescue mission. Uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, yeah. Save and launch. But this mission should get us a chunk of money. Hefty little chunk of money. Okay. Um, T. And so now that Jeb is at one star, we can actually get him to hold prograde and retrograde, which becomes very useful. We don't have patched connects. We didn't update, update, upgrade the um, uh, antenna center. It's the, this guy. Uh, so we're kind of doing all this on the fly. We're making it up as we go. Which is doable. Done it before. I've seen Kool-18 do it a bunch of times. So yeah, we're going to go for this. Um, I'm just going to put throttle to full just because and then we can throttle back when we need to. Good. Release. And we need to. Alright. Going up. Nice and steady. Nice and smooth ascent. We actually thrust up a little more. Okay, good. So this is flying a bit straighter, a bit more stable. I think that it's once I start to kick over that it wants to do weird things, probably. We'll see. Typically, when I build things, I put swivels on everything, but Reliance give you a little more boost, and we should be okay with it? I don't know. We'll see what happens. 
Oh, okay, so we're past 100 meters per second. We can start kicking over for our gravity turn to the east. And in case you haven't done this before, we'll talk through this a little bit. We want to do whoa, gravity turns to the east because that's the uh, direction that Kerbin is rotating in. And you want to go that direction because you get a, you get a, you get a grab, grab system. No, you get a rotational boost from uh, the planet's spin. Okay, come on. Fins are fighting me a little bit. This is at least a bit more stable uh, north and south wise, but I'm trying to get it. Come on. All right. Once I ditch the outer stage. There we go. Okay, so let's top that out. We're barely accelerating, which is fine. We're going to go ahead and lock to prograde. It's not the best uh, flight path. We're a little bit to the north. I'm going to try to pull that up just a wee bit to the south. Try to level it out, get a nice equatorial uh, thing going up. We are very, very straight up and down. It's going to be a really high uh, flight. It's, it's okay. We can still make it work, but it's not really ideal. This guy was so long, and these fins are keeping me so prograde. Yeah, but with the lack of mods and Kerbal Joint Reinforcement right now, I'm okay with this. This is the cost of doing business. So now, orbital prograde. We're up high enough to where the atmospheric effects aren't going to be that intense. Yeah, this should work out just fine. What's our apoapsis? 50-something. Okay. And again, we're up pretty high. We're actually going to kick it over just about all the way over to horizontal. We're still going to keep adding speed, and now we're adding it in the more important direction, horizontal. That'll start pushing our apoapsis away. See how the arc is spreading? Yeah. Apoapsis isn't really going up. Oh, it's going up slowly. Good, 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 good. But we are flattening out our trajectory, which is excellent. I really hope there's enough fuel. I think so. Yeah, this should get us pretty high. This will circularize, and this will do our our stiff. If not, we'll send a rescue, a rescue mission with another ship. That's going to be messy. But I could do it. We can make it happen. All right, looks like our apoapsis is slowly climbing to escape the, the entirety of Kerbin's atmosphere. Not that fast. So we're going to go ahead and pull back a little... Oh. Okay. We're going to lock prograde and just keep firing prograde. Yeah, this should be... Here. Aha, right click. I love that new feature. I keep forgetting to use it. Yeah, this should be actually a pretty good uh, orbital insertion maneuver. Usually I'm not this this clean with it, but I think we're going to do a pretty good one. Okay, good. So we are going to leave the atmosphere, even if even if it's just briefly. But right now, we're, we're flattening it out so nicely that we'll circularize nice and early. Alright, good. We are in space. Periaps sticking out. And okay, that's good. That's plenty. That's high enough. Um, because we're gonna get up here. Actually, we can actually do it here. We can burn something else. But nope, we'll just get to our apoapsis and burn there. I can't. No, I don't have patched conics. I can't do that yet. I was gonna say we could warp to our apoapsis. Nope. All I have is the number. That's it. So. Anywho, um. So we are going to go to the moon. Let's see, where is the moon? Oh, the moon is there. Okay. You know what? We're not even going to circularize. We don't need to. All we have to do is wait for the moon to come over the horizon, and then we burn. We burn prograde. We still have some fuel in this. Good, good, excellent. That'll get us our lunar injection started. Cool. All right. So, F5. Quick save. We're going to warp up just a little bit until we see the moon. Hopefully we can see it around the atmosphere there. Okay, 
Let's do a little more. A little faster. Oh, oh, that's not the kill. That's right. I forget. They changed the, the button that kills time warp. It used to be the X button, which was like no fuel, would also kill time warp. But now it's the slash button to the right of the greater than, less than. Less than, greater than? To the right of those guys. Okay, so the moon should be popping up any moment. And it will be visible. Aha, there it is. All right. So we got the moon in our sights. We're going to burn prograde. Burn this guy down. Kill him off. Kill off this stage, I mean. And we'll switch to the smaller tank and the terrier. Doesn't look like much, but that tank is pretty darn efficient. All right. So now we're going to see our apoapsis grow, 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 grow. And when it gets out to about here, once you have Pashconics, you'd see... Oh, there's an encounter. But we're not going to have that, so we're going to eyeball this. Like I said, I've seen Quill 18 do it a few times. I'm fairly confident that I can do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This will this will work, I think. I'm pretty sure. I hope. Back off on the throttle, because this climbs quickly. And... Stop it. Stop it there. Okay. And now, uh, we... we hope and we pray that we have a Mooner encounter. Alright, what is this all about? Shh, broken a speed record. Yay. Alright, so there's the Moon. Let's quick save real quick. And time warp. Hey, there's Kerbin. Bye, Kerbin. And uh, there goes Kerbin. So see how we are heading right toward the Moon? It is actually orbiting that away, but so are we. And if I did this right, and I think I did, when we get over here, you'll see you'll see things change. Okay, this is gonna take a while to get over there though, so we'll go ahead and accelerate. Oh, we're losing antenna. Oh no! Good thing Jeb is on board to command things. Oh, see how it turns red? I tell you, oh, low signal. You're almost done, buddy. Yep, and now no signal. All right, so, ah, there we go, Mooner Encounter. So we are now technically in Mooner space. Because we're here, we're in a hive, but we can take crew report. That's gonna be some science, that's awesome. I wish there was more I could do. But there's not, which is a pity. So, right now, we're on that which doesn't look like it's that big a deal. So, let's see, F5, quick save. I could probably burn retrograde and get into an orbit of the moon, which would get us more rewards and things. Yeah, let's try for that. Excuse me. Gosh, I can't add a maneuver. <laughs> I'm so used to having those, those helpful things. All right, so we are set retrograde, or we are set orientated to the moon so if we burn we're not quite there yet though are we no, let's get a little bit closer to the periapsis and we're pretty far away so it's not a great encounter but it still counts as an encounter I mean we could try to do like a slingshot maneuver we could maybe even hit minmus I don't know okay so we're closer to it doing anything to our orbit? Not much. Perhaps this is going down, but not much. Alright, so at this point, let's see. Our orbit was going around, but then we bopped into the, the moon's encounter. I have a pretty good feeling that once we leave this, we're still going to have a Kerbin orbit. So you know what? We're just going to let it go and just do a Mooner flyby. Hi, Moon. Bye, Moon. We're coming for you next. We'll be there. We'll, we'll, we'll hit you. Ah, yeah, see? There you go. Still have a lunar in uh, a, a Kerbal Kerbin encounter. Um, and we still have tons of fuel. Nice. Glad that worked out that way. So, a periapsis is a little high. 
But we're coming up on our apoapsis, which is good, because now we can lower our periapsis. Uh, but let us, again, retrograde. Now we're orientated toward Kerbin. Burn it retrograde. We can see our periapsis lower, 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 lower. I'm doing it a bit faster. And a bit faster still. We're going to aim for, oh, something under 70, and then we can fine-tune things later when we get closer. There's a trick to that, I think. There we go. 66. We'll go lower. 45. There we go. 45. Beautiful. So that should be plenty to get us uh, to uh, home. To home. Back home. All right. So we're here. The moon has flown by. And there's Kerbin. Nothing for it now but to accelerate. And we're going to slowly, oh so slowly, get drawn in to, back into Kerbin. Okay, whoa. 10,000. 1,000. Okay, so we're, we're decently close. We got a signal again, which is great. Not that we can transmit anything, but we have a signal. So our orbital velocity is going to be kind of high. We're going to come in pretty fast and scrape through the atmosphere. So, we could burn retrograde, and that would slow us down, yes, but it would also lower our periapsis to where it would probably drop it into the planet, and we'd, we'd hit it going really, really fast. That's not ideal. But, if you... Let's see. Where... Ah, ooh, wrong button. Somewhere between retrograde and... There's, I don't know what, which one that is. Radial in or out. If you burn, it will sh shrink your overall orbit without just changing too much of your periapsis. Let's give that a try. So it's... The more we put it there... Unless I'm going the wrong way. No, that's about the right way. Well, we can adjust things in a moment. It's not really changing our orbital velocity, is it? Nope. Maybe we're maybe it's the other way. I'm so used to having these things up where it says prograde, retrograde, radial in, out, normal, anti-normal. So this is a little. I'm I'm I am missing my tools. There we go. That's the right way, I think. Yes. There we go. Okay, that makes more sense. And it says we're speeding up. Oh, that's because we're readjusting our orbit. Okay, hold on. Okay, so now I think I got it figured out. So, eh, stop. Wrong set of buttons. So now, between the two should be the balance point. Yes, our periapsis stays relatively unchanged, but our overall orbit shrinks and our orbital velocity should decrease. Nope, I want to go more retrograde. Because I want to shrink that back down to about... Oh, we're going to go for... 35 isn't bad. We still have tons of fuel. So we can do this for a long time and burn things down. Um, the main thing is that this is slowing our speed down, keeping us from smacking into the planet going super duper fast. Oh, I can forgetting about that. Alright, at some point you should be able to get it to balance out between the two to where you're effectively really just changing your orbital velocity. Yeah. Uh, 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 a little more. A little more. A little more. There we go. So there's some point right in there that is the happy balance between the two. This is a decent spot, though, because it's dropping slowly. It's definitely dropping that as well, and it's dropping our orbital velocity. It's small, it's minimal, but when you're far away from something, big changes, I'm sorry, little changes make a big difference further down. Okay, let's climb that back up again. There we go. And like I said, taking a little bit away here can save you a lot of hassle later on. While we're doing this, so let's go ahead and check out what our notifications are. Milestones! Money, money, money! First all by of the moon. Escape the gravitational influence of the moon. 
Oh, escape the gravitational, influ gravitational influence of Kerbin. Escape the gravitational influence of the moon. That's great. And then explore the moon. Oh, so that's that partial for that, that parameter of that contract. Awesome. Uh, yeah, okay. What's our fuel like now? So... No, we're gonna let it. We're gonna let it be. We're gonna leave our periapsis somewhere in like 35. Maybe go take it down to like 32. Let's take it down to like 32. There we go. Whoa, that drops really fast. <whistles> Touchy. Leave it at like 32. We may have only bled off 100 meters per second, but when it's early days in your, you know, your space program and you're doing this stuff, it can make a big difference. Ooh, that's a nice balance. That's barely ticking up. Beautiful. Excellent. On our electrical charge. Oh, great. Yeah, I packed way more batteries than I needed. Didn't really do any science, didn't do any transmitting, didn't do anything that requires electricity, really. There's no life support mods, thank goodness. I'm not a huge fan of that. Uh, I think I heard somebody say that, no, the Kerbins, um, they, uh, they, they're, they're, they're plant-based. They photosynthesize. They don't need food. They don't need snacks. They don't need noms. They're okay. I'm, I'm gonna go to get this down below. I mean, I could burn like this forever, but this is gonna take a long time. We're just going to get below 1,500 here, and then we'll call it, and we'll re-enter. Ooh, and that's stabilized. All right, so that's nice, and that shrunk our orbit by about a little more than, a little more than, it's a little less than half of what it was, so that's good. We're going to go quick save real quick. Cool, and now we can set ourselves just straight up retrograde, and we'll come in. I'm gonna let it go, and we're gonna get uh, we're gonna get a bit closer, and then we'll just burn straight up retrograde and slow ourselves down even more. Yeah, see that below 1500. We're still up pretty high, but yeah. Um, so again, we can still do the same trick. I think it was this. Whoa! Oh. Was it this? No, no, it was this one. Yeah, it was this way. Ah, wrong button. Here we go. And again, reducing our orbital velocity is a big help. All this is increasing our orbital velocity. Interesting. I guess at this point, it doesn't really make much of a difference because we're close enough we're just being sucked in no matter what we do. And the terrier, well, we weren't using much of it. But the terrier isn't that terribly ter the terrier isn't that terribly strong. Either way, we're gonna go into the atmosphere here. So we'll just set up to burn retrograde. We'll burn off the rest of this fuel, it'll drop us to where we are. It's gonna impact on the planet. In the water, oh no! Uh, anywhere but the desert. Anywhere but the desert. Prefer personally, personally, preferably, I like to burn off as uh, nearly all the fuel. Why be wasteful? Um, plus, it helps slow us down, makes things a bit smoother. We're coming in pretty quick here, and we're we're gonna warp fast forward to about there, I think. Okay, what's our altitude? Oh, we're about to hit atmosphere anyway. Just burn full power, and that's not going to change our periapsis too terribly much, but it is going to slow us down. Okay, so it's changing our periapsis. But either way, we were going to hit the atmosphere and come down anyway. This is fine. 
This is just fine. We'll be okay. There we go. Our periapsis is now inside the planet. We're going to come in and hit the water. Eh, not the end of the world. We've had a few splashdowns already. Another splashdown that hit the desert. And again, bleeding off speed now saves you from plummeting through the air really, 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 really fast. We're coming in a little steep. Not as shallow as it could be. And we're just about out of fuel. Three, two, one. Okay, a little early on the countdown there. There we go. All right. Kill all the th kill the throttle. Get rid of that. And now we just let this guy float back down. All right, Jeb. It's in your hands now. Retrograde. Oh, right. We want to be surface retrograde. That'll be more correct to the atmosphere. But we're... Oh, yeah. We're actually at a good speed. We just... Okay, we were being sped up by the pull. Now we're slowing down due to the air, the atmosphere. We're about to hit some of the thicker stuff, though. You know, below 35, it's not too bad. Under 35, it does start getting denser. Uh, but then when you get down to, like, what, 18, I think, is when it, you hit the thicker, thicker. And then the, the last five is, like, ugh, the thickest stuff. You know, where we all live. But at least since we're landing on the water, we can trust this guy. If we're landing on land, you have to give this, you know, good-sized grain of salt. So, we're coming down. Once we pass below a kilometer per second, um, the flame effects should dissipate. And there they go. And we should get our comms back. There it is. Pops right back up. Nye Island. Named after a certain bill. I wonder. All right. Coming down for a splash down. 13, 400. Yeah, this was this was easy peasy lemon squeezy. We're going to let it drop for a while. A typical guy that I like, especially in like this range, you sh as you're, you know, the thousands, you should be about that take off a number. So, you know, 15,000, 1500 and descending and descending. That's that's kind of like a an eyeball I eye shoot for. It's not necessary kill that because it should just stabilize on its own yeah I think that reaction wheel was a big help though all right we'll, we'll uh, let out the shoot at about 5,000 ASL we're continuing to slow down as the atmosphere is thick oh there we go okay 4,000 poof slowing it down pulling two G's and about one kilometer up, it should fully inflate, break us all the way, and we'll come in for a nice, gentle water landing. Yeah, and I took that. I was really safe and conservative with that. I could have taken that, that landing much, much stronger. We only burned off five points of our ablator out of 200, so, what, 2.5%? Uh, so, yeah, that was nice and gentle. Cool, and now we just wait to fall down, to splash down. Physics warp, because why not? Provided the game, actually, because I don't trust the game at landings right now. Quick save as we're passing through 100 meters. All right, and the splash. There we are, splash down after a mooner flyby. Cover of the vessel. Ooh, we're about 34 minutes. Eh, not too bad, though. For one mooner flyby. That was pretty quick. Quick and dirty. Yes, indeedy. Feed the needy. All right, so we got another 22 science from crew report and recovery of the vessel. Wow, just recovering the vessel was worth 12. That's cool. Uh, we got some monies back. Not much, but some. Whoa. Okay, and Jeb got some experience points. Awesome. All right, so, wow. We got lots of money from doing some stuff there. We got lots of notes. Let's see, what do we go to? Explore the moon. That's great. That's a contract complete. I completed the whole contract? I thought I had to land? Maybe just science from around the moon. I didn't read it that closely. Let's see. The, the other pieces should be the entirety of it. Explore the moon. 
there's enough data on the moon here to keep us all employed for a good long while, even though all I had was Jeb and the ship itself. Returned from a flyby and gathered first scientific data. Again, just a crew report. Contract, explore the moon. Moon, I should log right. Incredible. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so now we have lots of money. So now is the time to upgrade because now we can get patched conics, which will make flying out in space much easier, more details, more information. Um, th wow, that's a bigger cost than I think it used to be. So this next upgrade, right now you get patch conics, you can do maneuver nodes, I think. Maneuver nodes might be adding here or here. I have to check. Um, but it extends the, the range of the, the antennas. The next upgrade tracks unknown objects and increases the power, which is nice. Um, you, okay, just embark only on Kerbin, EVAs, and place flags. We're going to want that because we're going to go to the moon soon. And then max contracts. Aha! Yes. So now we can open up to seven contracts and flight planning, which enables maneuver nodes, which are a big, big helpful thing. Upgrade. All right. So we spent all the money on upgrades because that's just that. Yeah, we don't have money for that. We don't need to do that. We need to do that. Science. Um... Surface samples, res resource transfer, okay. This is a nice one to do surface samples. I don't know, we wouldn't have anything left. We'd have like 12,000 Kerbal bucks left. So no, not yet, not yet. Yeah, okay, so our next mission, mm, 76. I think I need a little more, yeah, I need solar panels. If we're gonna go to the moon, I need solar panels. Do I have the simple lander can? Oh, there it is. Okay, yeah. If we're going to go to the moon, I'm going to need lots of things. I'm going to need, well, I guess need versus want. A part of me wants to do something like an Apollo-style landing, or an Apollo-style mission, where you have, you know, the command module, the lander, and you send it up together, and then you disconnect, and you dock, and, and all those things. I want to do that, but I don't think quite yet. Next, we're going to go to the moon. But to do that, because it's it's the moon and it's far away, I'm going to want solar panels. These are just the basic, simple, starty, cheapy, easy solar panels and some better batteries. Um, but that's kind of a big deal. Ooh, and a probe core. That's helpful, too. So this is what we want to get next. We are 14 science away. I think I'm going to do my old trick from before this episode and take the rover out to whoa take the rover out to like the midlands and the highlands with a scientist on board yeah that'll get me a little more science all right uh once again it's night at kerbal space center oh, oh, uh, we'll check the missions explore the moon orbit spacewalk and return from the moon oh we almost could have just done that we'll take that back because we'll be completing that when we go back to the moon vip tourist 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 Science data from space around Kerbin. That's easy. Protective shell splashdown. Atmospheric surveys. Ugh, add a location. Heat shield and landing gear? No. But we've got two for the moon. Or space around Kerbin and the moon. That's what we'll do next. We will go to the moon. Anywho, uh, thanks again for watching. Thanks for hanging out. If you'd like, hit like, hit subscribe. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors, pass the word. I will catch you later.